Welcome back guys and I hope you're all doing mighty fine out there and today we're going to talk about swapping PC parts and is it worth it and is it worth your time because this month I had two different occasions where I had people messaging me willing to swap PC parts for PC parts that I had and I wasn't using and honestly I came out of these deals very much ahead with PC parts that I can now utilize and especially a laptop that I can now utilize for traveling. So swapping PC parts, it's a relatively new concept for me at least since I did live in Japan for quite some time. And in the Japanese culture, swapping PC parts and phones and consoles is really much non-existent. I actually never heard of it before over there. But at least when I came back to Australia, a lot of people on Gumtree started messaging me, would you swap a PS4 for a computer? And I'm thinking to myself, no, I wouldn't swap a $200 console for a $500 PC. But then I had some genuine people message me and say, hey, look, I know you're selling a PC. Do you have any other PC parts lying around? And it was in this case, I managed to message them back because they said they were willing to swap an older motherboard with a cooler and some RAM, and also on another occasion someone was willing to swap a laptop, and I asked for the specs, and then I got more curious when it had an i7 Haswell in there. So I went and checked out these places, and of course brought some of the parts that I was willing to swap, which in this case was an X99 motherboard, a 10-core Broadwell E, and also a 16 gigabytes of DDR4 and a water cooler. And I managed to swap this for a laptop. It's a Horizon, a brand that I've never heard of, but I'm glad I've heard of it now because it's extremely portable, lightweight, has an i7-4710MQ in there that goes up pretty high on the clock speeds and also has a GTX 860M in there, the Maxwell version. So I was very impressed with the specs. And then I also managed to put an additional eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory in there. So now I've got 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory in there. It's also got a 250 gigabyte Samsung Evo SSD. So it is lightning fast and very good. And it will serve for when I want to edit 1080p videos while I'm traveling. Now you're probably wondering, does it run GTA 5? Well, that was the first benchmark I managed to pull up and it actually ran it pretty well at normal settings at 1080p. I was getting over 60 FPS the whole time I was playing the first mission and I was just very impressed with the performance. So keep in mind that the CPU was getting very hot there and I managed to test this in Dota 2, getting very good frame rates and also CSGO getting over 200 FPS most of the time. Although those CPU temperatures were worrying me a little bit as they were going near 100 degrees a lot of the time and this was in about a 25 degree ambient environment. So I will have to look into maybe replacing the thermal paste see if I can cool it down a little bit more. And it also had a custom BIOS on there called the Prima Mod, where I managed to overclock the memory a little bit. And there's also some additional more settings available if you wanna tweak things in the BIOS like sleep states and different C states. Though the laptop was only half the goodness that I managed to swap here in that first deal where I put up the X99 board and other parts, I also managed to get a Cooler Master Silento case out of the deal. I also got a Cooler Master cooler with a Noctua Frankenstein combo fan on there and also two 16 gigabyte DDR3 kits of memory which totaled 32 gigabytes in total. There was also a 32 gigabyte SSD thrown in there and the best part of this was there was a 4690K thrown in the mix which will do very well in terms of a future build that I've actually got planned coming and ties into the second swap that I managed to do. Now the second deal I managed to snap up here was a Z97 motherboard and also a Cooler Master 212 Evo with two fans on it and a eight gigabyte stick of DDR3. Now I swapped this for a Z170 motherboard that I had lying around here since the person wanted either a Z170 or a Z270 because they wanted to upgrade to the latest CPU. I believe they blew up their previous CPU. Though before I took up this offer, I managed to go there in person and confirm that the motherboard was working. So if it didn't work, then I wasn't obviously willing to do the swap. And same with the other deal as well. I went there in person, made sure that the laptop and the other parts that the person was willing to swap were all confirmed working before I did this transaction. And I was completely blown away by the deals that I got here. I think I was more in a better position because I was willing to offer parts that the person needed and the parts that I didn't need. So I was kind of in a position of power there. But if you guys are wanting to swap parts in real life, then I highly recommend you go and confirm that those parts are working. I wouldn't recommend swapping PC parts online with people that you don't know. I think it raises the possibility of getting hosed 
quite high and getting scammed. So I wouldn't recommend that there as opposed to just selling things online and getting cash. Though ultimately it is something to think about if you are selling PC parts or if you are into the used price performance scene and you do get people messaging you who don't have money but they do have things that they are willing to swap. I think if you are in a position of power where you don't need those PC parts and they do need them then you can barter your way to a pretty good deal. Also, I wanted to apologize for the lack of used price performance content hitting the channel recently. Ever since Ryzen dropped, I've been backlogged with a lot of new products that I have to review and they do help pay the bills and they do help keep the channel afloat. So I hope you guys understand that. And with that, I do have a very cool trick. If you guys get a PC or a laptop with Windows 10 installed and it comes with no product key, but it is a confirmed working valid version of Windows 10, then what you can do is reset the PC two times when it's booting up into Windows. So yeah, deliberately reset it. And on the third time when you're booting up, you'll then have the option to reset the computer completely without having the product key needed or without needing an installation disk. So this is a little trick that I've learned and then you'll be back up and running with a fresh install. It'll also clear out any passwords that were previously on the PC. So it's a great little tip and trick for you guys who are into the used price performance scene. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, then be sure to give it a big like and let me know in the comments section below what was your favorite piece of all these swaps today. Would love to hear your thoughts and opinions as always and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.